you get an inch or two of rain in the west it has very different impacts and so uh, I, people need to understand that because it is a very different kind of a rain event when this is happening out across parts of the west hillary is very close to landfall in baja california is a tropical storm now uh, it doesn't lessen the threats at all of damaging wind and rainfall we've already seen reports of tropical storm force winds in baja fox weather's hurricane specialist is brian norcross he joins us now brian well, we uh, are watching uh, Hillary, as you say, develop in the way we expected it to as it comes right next to the Baja California coastline. A lot of circulation has been over land. The upper level winds are becoming more hostile. There's dry air into the core of the circulation, but it's still transporting this tremendous amount of tropical moisture north. So here is the uh, new advisory from the Hurricane Center. You mentioned 70 mile an hour winds is the estimated of the peak winds in the circulation and in an isolated area. It is moving faster and this is going to move pretty quickly, but it's so big, it's still going to take quite a bit of time to come by. It's going to take all day to come by. And by tomorrow morning in Southern California, the weather will improve dramatically south to north. And by the end of the day, it should be uh, pretty good, except in the mountains where some lingering moisture could still cause storms for the next few days. All right, let's take a look at the wider view and then you see where this moisture is funneling. So think of this as a river of air that's pulling moisture out of the former hurricane and transporting it north and look at how it's going. It's going all the way north through Nevada into Idaho and then wrapping around into Montana and Wyoming. And that's because we have this huge high pressure system out here that is that heat dome high that hasn't dislodged itself or been dislodged, although it does look like that is going to eventually happen. But right now it's creating this tremendous flow up to the north and that's what's causing this unusual uh, situation. There are the radars across Southern California and what we're looking at and what we're going to watch are these areas of enhanced radar return. These yellow areas, that's where the rain is heavier. A lot of that is occurring on the foothills and on the mountaintops. And then, you, you know, you can imagine, it's not hard to imagine that when it rains on the mountain, that water comes downhill and it comes through the valleys and that eventually gets either into the flood control systems or into the creeks and streams, or it gets into, when it gets into the desert, the desert's normally completely dry. So you don't have rivers or creeks or streams in the desert. You have these low areas called arroyos that used to be rivers back, you know, in previous eras uh, when it wasn't uh, a desert. And then they fill up with water and surges of water come through them. So unfortunately, that's extremely dangerous and actually can take out roads. Uh, historically, the last tropical storm that actually hit Southern California in 1939, it took out the railroad, the uh, uh, phenomena of the water rushing through the desert. So uh, this is a that's what is very, very dangerous. We're going to watch that develop. And the uh, analysis is of where the heaviest rains are going to fall. If you notice, they fall up this, uh, up the mountains here. So that's the mountain range. That's the peninsula range east of San Diego. And then this up here is the uh, San Jacinto Mountains near Palm Springs, where the heaviest uh, focus of the rain is. And then on across the San Bernardino Mountains and the San Gabriel Mountains north of Pasadena, Los Angeles, Riverside. And then we get over here into the Hollywood Hills and, uh, and so forth uh, north of L.A., where those hills are not not as high, not as tall, so you get less rain there, but also because the moisture that's coming in kind of gets shielded by some of these other mountains uh, before it even gets there. But still, all those higher elevations, all those foothills subject to catching the rain, and then it all flows downhill. So that's the, the big threat. Also points to the north, by the way, up this uh, here is the Mojave Desert up in here. And then all the tall, very tall mountains up north of the Mojave Desert, up toward Death Valley, those also will catch this moisture. That moisture comes downhill. So as I said, the uh, mountain, uh, the areas below the mountains are the most dangerous in this kind of scenario. And that's what we're going to uh, be watching for. And here in, in extreme Southern California, down in the San Diego area and along the coastal plain, notice less rain. So the threat here is for the water in the mountains coming downhill. 
So that's where when if you get some kind of an alert, if you live in an area where it's only light rain out there, you think, well, this isn't uh, too bad. The threat is going to be for when that water comes downhill and you're going to get flash flood uh, alerts and things like that from the National Weather Service on your Fox Weather app and on your television and, and so forth. That's what you want to be uh, on the alert for throughout Southern California, not just where it's raining hard. Off in the desert, uh, lay again, here we are in the Colorado Desert, part of the Sonora Desert that is uh, east of the mountains. The big threat is up here, and there you see the San Bernardino Mountains and the uh, uh, San Jacinto Mountains and all the rain forecast to run downhill through the desert. So as I was saying, that's uh, the threat. Up toward Las Vegas, uh, again, the, in the Las Vegas Valley, probably light rain, but the mountains outside of Las Vegas are going to get, uh, capture some of that rain, and it's all coming south. And look at the heavy rain forecast here in the uh, north of, and around Death Valley in this this uh, Panamint range here. Well, that's just part of a long range of mountains there north of Mojave Desert that will catch a lot uh, of rain, very, very tall mountains. In terms of the wind, the wind area looks like this, uh, but the core of the storm is in here with the strongest winds, and then that moves north. So uh, and if we were talking about the Gulf Coast or Florida or some, the Carolinas or something, we would get all concerned about that core of wind. But in this case, that's not the issue. In this case, the issue are these winds just in general, strong winds, when they encounter the mountains and you have a pass in the mountains and it funnels the wind and it increases them through there, just like a Santa Ana. So if you live in an area or you experience Santa Ana winds kind of typically, you expect there that's where you're going to get the gustiest winds. Other areas are not going to see uh, winds that are going to be terribly strong. On the west side of the mountains, all along the coastal plain, winds aren't going to be terribly strong, except where a gap in the mountain will let the wind through. The winds will be stronger, and, and that will be where the power outages and other issues will likely occur. But with saturated ground, it will be worse than in a Santa Ana situation, where a Santa Ana wind is dry. This is going to be a wet Santa Ana wind uh, situation. So here we go with the winds and watch it coming in. You see where the strongest winds are coming in from the southwest initially. Then eventually when we get these uh, bottom of the storm winds, that's going to happen late in the uh, evening tonight into early tomorrow. And then look, dry air moves in. So uh, good news is coming, but we have to get through today and tonight. Uh, and then all this dry air will arrive tomorrow and the rain chances taper off pretty rapidly. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.